गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल बी ऑल टॉकिंग अबाउट द चैप्टर दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज ऑफ क्लास नाइन ओके चैप्टर नेम इट सेल्फ इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल बी ऑल टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग कॉन्सेप्ट The introduction itself states that there are different 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 types of language, right? <coughs> so, what does the language itself imply? Language itself implies that any mode of communication through which we can interact with person to person, either person to person or with person to machine, whatever it is. So, there are various types of language, right? So, now if talking about language, there comes in mind that there might be human language, there might be machine level language, and what's uh, what not and what else. Okay. Now, over here we will be all bothered about machine level language. Machine level language means what? A language through which machines can understand all the concept and all the logical things that the human would like to interpret to the machine, right? Language. Any language comprises of two important things. That is a compiler and an interpreter. okay so basically all talking about machines when we will be talking about machines we need to understand that a machine also itself comprises of an interpreter as well as a compiler so now a machine can understand two different type of language that is a high level language and a low level language when talking about low level language what are those languages which are known as low level languages if you are well aware of calculators i expect that you will be knowing all those things A calculator comprises of low-level language, which is also known as a firmware. Understood? Every uh, software which is embedded into a hardware is known as a firmware. Okay, and that firmware comprises of a low-level language. But in case of computer, when you will be talking about, let's suppose Windows Seven, the operating itself cannot directly understand any of the low-level language. It can only understand high-level language, and one of the kind of high-level language is Java. Okay. Java is a high level language. <coughs> okay. So high level language In case of high level language there are of two types. Basically procedure oriented and object oriented okay object oriented and procedure oriented what do you understand what does the simply by simply by the term itself what does you understand procedure oriented programming approach tells all about the procedure what does this imply it states it implies that all sorts of communication which is going to be done we are talking about language right so there will be communication so all sort of communication is all going to access to be accessed using functions in case of procedure oriented programming approach it is all about function and functions share all the data globally okay functions are the root approach are the root thing using which the data the information is been passed from one part to the another part that means in case of procedure oriented everything comprises of functions now i would like to give a very simple example to make you all understand this let's suppose there is a person whose name is a this particular person tries to command b another person he tries to access the resource of the person b let's suppose this particular person tells the person b for example to bring a cricket bat to bring a cricket bat from jamshedpur in case of procedure oriented programming approach what will happen is 
this particular person known as A, he will be commanding to B with complete procedures. All the procedures this particular person B needs to follow. This indirectly directly means that all the commands, all the procedures, all the functions will be directly given by the person A. This particular person B will not have any kind of independence. For example, if this person A tells to B that you are supposed to go to Manila bus at 5 a.m. After that, you need to reach to Jamshedpur, which will take at least two hours. From there, at 7 o'clock, you will be needed to carry a toto or auto, whatever it is. After that, you need to go to Vishtupur. Over there, you will be finding a shop named as XYZ. From there, you need to purchase that very particular bat and bring it. So it completely becomes very hectic, right? All the procedures are being commanded by the person A to B. Independence is completely lost. Let's suppose in case of object oriented what happens is this particular person A will just command B that you are just supposed to bring a cricket bat from Jamshedpur. Whatever time you go, whatever vehicles you take, whatever store you decide that is completely that will be completely dependent upon you. My perspective is you need to bring a cricket bat. That's it, nothing else. Over here, what we can understand is all the function, in fact, all the information, all the data, all the data is completely executed revolving around A. And this particular person known as A, this particular person A is trying to communicate B using various various functions. But one more very important point is using functions which shares global data. All the data are globally accessible. That means, let's suppose he commands you need to take Manila bus, you need to go to Jamshedpur, after that you need to go to Bistupur, after that you need to go to a particular shop named XYZ. These are all different different, though these are all different different functions, but these are all accessing each and every particular data information. So informations are passing independently. But there comes a threat, a security threat. So all those things we will be talking later. Okay, so basically procedure oriented programming language, it is given in phase number two. You can check out the data, you can check out the diagram, it is given data value, something like this. This particular map, this particular diagrammatic representation tells what the data values, the information, the data values is trying to execute all the commands using what free flow of data. Data is flowing directly. That means there is an independence of data. But how? Using function, various, various functions. That means it clearly states that this particular function can access the data. This particular function can also access the same data and this particular function can also access the same data. That means the data can though flow freely but there will be a major difficulty that is a time lag. All those things do not you need not need to bother about. Later on we will study all those things. Okay. Now coming to object oriented approach.
See, all these things, basically these are all approaches. There is no any kind of object oriented programming or something like that. All these are approach, a kind, a way via which a language can interact, via which a compiler can understand, via which an interpreter can execute. So basically all these are approaches rather than a type of language. Understood? Object oriented approach. Okay. Object, in case of object oriented approach, what happens is all everything is all focused about object. In case of object oriented approach, everything is all focused about object. What do you understand by object? A object is basically a representation, an actual representation of a class. When you will be going to construct a building, let's suppose your father wishes to construct a new building, he will not call the masons directly and start making a building. Definitely he will plan out. He needs to go to a civil engineer that particular civil engineer will make a map and that map work will be executed. Understood? So basically that particular map which is also known as a blueprint, using that blueprint, focusing on that blueprint, one will be constructing the building. That means that object is what the actual building over where, inside where you will be living. But the map work done by the civil engineer, that will be known as class, which, rather, uh, which later on we will be focusing. So, in case of object oriented approach, everything is all focused about object. The data, the data can be handled using function, but there is a very important point that is the data cannot be accessed freely if you will be using access specifier. There comes a very new topic that is known as access specifier, access rather it is known as access modifier. In higher class, you will be all knowing that about all those things. Access why access modifier, not access specifier. Okay, leaving all those things, the data can flow to a function. A function can control all the data, but the most important part is limitations are there. If you are bounding the data into private, which is uh, then what will happen is that function different different function will not access all those data. Understood? Means what? function 1, function 2, function 3. Let's suppose a particular data is private. Then let's suppose this function have the accessibility of that data and this do not have, then all the data could be accessed by function 1, not by function 2 and function 3. So over here, Hence, it is known Java is a completely a very secure language. That is why most of the hardware utilities, most of the hardware use Java language. It is known as the most important point. Why Java? First question comes to is everyone should be why Java? Why not other language? Why? Because Java is very, very robust. Java is extremely robust. It is not threat prone. Threat prone means what? one cannot easily get the access of Java. Understood? Thank you.